Okay, so in this video we're going to talk about the move manipulators and if I was to select an object, press move, we could use this gizmo to kind of move the object around, right? So you can grab a handle or grab in between handles, etc. And this is pretty cool because this is the way a lot of other programs work. It's nice to be able to have this. However, because the way Blender is really set up to be used, you want to use G to move and then in combo so you press G and then like X Y Z shift Z right or shift X or shift Y and so it's a lot more efficient in my opinion to actually use the hotkeys here because you'll find yourself just going back and forth between all of these and then still at the end of the day you're going to end up using shortcuts at some point so using G or whatever and so an alternative to get around this is maybe setting move rotate and scale on by default but then you're going to have to whenever you want to change something so we use box select here for a second you'll see that we get the whole shebang but it, if we want to just use move we got to go in and turn those on and then turn them off right so that gets annoying as well so we're just going to create a new cube here so i don't actually like using these either although some people do so we're about to commit Blender Heresy, and we're going to replace shortcuts here. So for move, we're going to assign shortcut to G. For rotate, assign shortcut to R. And scale, assign shortcut to S. And so now you can do G, R, and S like so. No problems. Here's the trick. If we go to Edit Preferences, because we can't use that hotkey anymore, to move the way we normally would in Blender. So if we go to hotkeys here, look up key bindings, look up G, and go down and we'll find under 3D view, we can expand it. And instead of just doing a G regular press, we can do double click, right? So we can do that number. Now we go back up to the top, do the same thing for R under 3D view. I didn't pass it, I think it passed it. Yeah, so right here, rotate, double click, and we'll do S as well. And this one, instead of just being called scale, it's resize. So do a double click. Okay, and so now we can press G, R, or S to do whatever we want, but if we want to, we can double tap G, and we can now move it using the hotkeys. So you don't completely render that, that hotkey or that shortcut useless, you can still access it if you need to. And what this does is kind of frees you up to just kind of focus on modifying uh, your mesh, and you don't have to worry so much about using so many hotkeys. The trick here is, this manipulator, in my opinion, is too small, so I'm going to bump it up to 100, change it to what you want. But now, this is going to work out pretty well. So, I won't end up using W anymore. Let's keep that in mind. There's no need, because the move manipulator actually has a select box, or whatever you want. So now, um, when I go into edit mode, Right. I often find myself hitting W anyways to get back to select box when I don't need it anymore. So trying to break that habit anyways. Uh, what I found interesting to do is set inset faces, change the shortcut to W. And now you can use E to extrude like normal if you wanted. But you can also use W so you can do an inset. And if you hold control, if you didn't know this, you can do kind of like a extrude along normals with inset. Okay, so if I was to just press W to inset and then hit control, you can do that number, right? So the way this works out is I can use it like so. So now it's behaving pretty similar to something kind of like Max, if you will, like 3D Studio Max. The trick is uh, right now, if I press G, nothing happens. You have to assign this repeatedly in different uh, object on uh, different types of objects at that. So if I press assign G 
sine r sine s. Um, now when I press G R or S, it works. And this is going to happen again on other things, so such as a Bezier curve. If I was to try to I'll move it up real quick by double tapping, but you can see if I press G, nothing happens. So I actually have to right click assign G R S. And so now I can access these again. All right. So it's pretty cool when you start to get in the flow of using this. It's a little counterintuitive if you've been using Blender for a while, but I think if you break it a little bit, break that cycle, it probably would be more useful than not. I think you'll find that using manipulators can be quite good because let's say, for example, um, you are working on something and you're doing a lot of like extrusion and then you got to move things on the certain axes or you want to move freeform on two axes so what you end up doing is pressing uh, G and then shift X and then you might move and then G and then have to figure out shift like shift Y or whatever the case may be and depending on your object this can sometimes change and vary so this works in really well in combo with um, other add-ons so I'm gonna load up my regular blender scene here we're gonna go back to this one I gotta quit it real quick and I should run into an error here when I get started it, might, it may or may not work correctly but uh, because some reason there's like a conflict when you have two different blender scenes open and you start using different preferences like I guess they try to bleed one into the other or something like that some weird goes on anyway so uh, using this in combo with like machine tools for example you can see a preview of what direction you need to go and you don't have to think about it no more it's like you know exactly what you're going to end up doing and where it's going to go before you do it and so you can always just grab them and or do like an inset and do that number so now I could say individual active and I think active is awesome because now I could say I want all this to move out this direction or maybe I want it to move out this direction right or a little bit in this direction so then you can start getting some pretty interesting movements and it's very fluid like you're just clicking you're not having to do a whole bunch of shortcuts and hotkeys for the most part and so you see where that's going right all in all I don't know how useful this will be to you I don't know if um, I'll even continue using it myself but I'm gonna leave it on for a bit and just see if I can't find this to be um, a better workflow because I got to adjust to it a better way of using the tools in blender I try to stay away from doing custom solutions for things like this because it in my opinion it just makes you remember more stuff and if you have to ever reset blender you have to go back and uh, reconfigure all this right but sometimes it's just nice to not not have to really think hard about anything to be able to work and so it's already a lot of shortcuts to remember right you may be working on an area like this this is one drawback maybe working on an area like this let's say you're up in here and you want to select this whole loop well your manipulator is completely gone now the gizmo has gone so you still need that hotkey if you want to move this down on Z right so you have to press G twice and then utilize it anyways that's it for this video I hope you found something here interesting and uh, maybe Give it a shot. Tell me what you think, all right? Take care.